Hello and welcome back to B Pharma Wise. Today we are going to discuss anti Markovnikov's addition or peroxide effect or Kharash effect. In the last video, we discussed about Markovnikov's rule. What happens when Markovnikov's rule comes into picture is when you add an unsymmetrical reagent like HBr to an unsymmetrical alkene like propene, the positive part of the reagent attaches to the carbon containing greater number of hydrogen atoms, the double bonded carbon containing greater number of hydrogen atoms and the negative part of the reagent goes and attaches to the double bonded carbon containing lesser number of hydrogen atoms. This is the Markovnikov's rule. So, in this case, CH3, CH Br CH3 that is isopropyl bromide will be the major product. This is Markovnikov's rule. We have discussed it in detail in the previous video. I'll link that video in the i button here. Now, in today's video, we are going to further this discussion discussion to the case when such reactions are carried out in presence of organic peroxides. So if I carry out this same reaction, addition of HBr in an alkene, if I carry out this reaction in the presence of organic peroxides like this, then what will happen? Instead of isopropyl bromide, I will get CH3, CH2, CH2 Br which is N-propyl bromide as a major product. Now why this happened it must be due to the presence of organic peroxides. The earlier rule was given by a Russian chemist Markovnikov and this rule where in presence of organic peroxides the product differs is given by an American chemist Karash. So this is also called as Karash effect as this happens due to the presence of peroxide, this phenomenon of anti markovnikovs addition is also called as peroxide effect. And this is what the topic of discussion today, anti markovnikovs addition of halogen acids in an alkene, also called as peroxide effect. Now why this happens can be only explained when we discuss the mechanism. As you know, for Markovnikov's addition, ionic mechanism is responsible. But here, in case of peroxide effect, the mechanism is a free radical mechanism. So let's discuss the mechanism. Here, in first step, I'll write it step by step. This is organic peroxide, R-O-O-R. So what happens? In the first step, this organic peroxide breaks homolytically. You know, when homolytic fission happens, two electrons are shared equally. So one electron will go with this, one electron will go with this, with this and it will lead to formation of free radicals. So here in this case, you will get two alkoxy free radicals. Now, as you know, free radicals are extremely reactive. They will try to find out somebody who will share an electron with it. So in the next step, immediately this alkoxy free radical will go and it will try to break down the bond between HBr which is our reagent here. So when this bond become between HBr breaks homolytically, again one electron is with hydrogen, one electron is with bromine and so this hydrogen goes and uh, joins with this oxygen these two electrons they will form a bond and they'll form ROH this bond is formed and then bromine atom is a separated it is a free radical again with a single electron then this bromine free radical in the next step will go and attack on our substrate which is this alkene molecule so I'll write alkene molecule here CH3 CH double bond CH2. Now this bromine free radical is trying to break any bond. Now all these bonds, in all these bonds, all are sigma bonds, only this one is a pi bond. So it is easier to break. So this bromine free radical will break this pi bond and the electrons will be shared by this and this carbon. Now if this bromine goes and attaches to this carbon, then that is one 
probability that it may form CH3, CHBr, CH2, and this atom, this electron is uh, used by this carbon to form a bond with bromine, and this electron is with this carbon, so it will give rise to this free radical and the next probability is this bromine will use the electron on this carbon and this will be a free radical so you will get ch3 ch free radical and ch2 br now if you observe carefully both the cases you'll come to know this carbon is a primary carbon so it makes this free radical a primary free radical and this carbon is a secondary carbon means it is attached to two other carbon atoms so it is a secondary free radical right you know the stability order of stability for free radicals tertiary are more stable than secondary are more stable than primary so in primary and secondary secondary will be more stable so automatically its preparation will be preferred its formation will be preferred so this will be formed in excess than this so ultimately what happens this is formed in excess the secondary free radical and in the next step which is the fourth step this secondary free radical ch3 ch CH2 Br will again go and break the bond between HBr and this bond will be broken homolytically hydrogen will take one electron bromine will take one electron to form bromine free radical this will form a bond with this carbon and you will get CH3 CH2 CH2 Br sorry CH2 Br plus this bromine free radical is separated. Now this bromine free radical which is formed will go back to step number 3 and it will continue the reaction. Okay, so this is the free radical mechanism involved in case of anti makonikovs addition of HBr in alkene and as you can see clearly that N-propyl bromide is the major product as opposed to isopropyl bromide which was the major product in case of Markovnikov's addition. Now I will tell you a few more things like anti Markovnikov's addition of um, such halogen acids. Now there are multiple halogen acids like there is, there is HCl, there is HBr or there is HI. So we will discuss the halogen acid addition to alkenes in presence of organic peroxides. Now I'll tell you only HBr is capable of showing peroxide effect in case if the reaction is happening in presence of organic peroxides. HCl and HI will not give peroxide effect. I'll tell you why. We will discuss the bond energies. The HCl has 103 kilocalorie per mole, the bond energy. HBr is 87 kilocalorie per mole and uh, HI is 71 kilocalorie per mole. It means you will need 87 kilocalorie per mole energy to break the bond between hydrogen and bromine. And these organic peroxides which are forming this alkoxy free radicals has that much energy. So it can go and break the bond between HBr. But HCl is having a higher bond energy 103 kilocalorie per mole which an alkoxy free radical cannot produce. So it is not capable of breaking the bond between hydrogen and chloride. So obviously HCl will not go give this peroxide effect because the bond will not be broken only by the alkoxy free radicals. Okay. Now you must be thinking okay then it can break the bond between HI. Yes it can definitely. So it will break the bond between HI and iodine free radicals will be formed. But the problem is iodine free radicals iodine free radicals as soon as they are formed they will spontaneously react within themselves to produce iodine molecule and so this iodine free radical will not go and attack on the alkene molecule so this mechanism will not proceed further for the reaction to happen iodine free radical has to go and attack on the alkene molecule then then only this reaction will proceed but it doesn't happen this is the reason why HCl and HI will not give peroxide effect so even if I give you a case where addition of HI to propene is happening in the presence of organic peroxide still the product will be as per the Markovnikov's 
addition rule okay so this is all about anti makonikov's addition or peroxide effect or karach effect i hope you have understood if yes don't forget to hit that like button and don't 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 forget to subscribe my channel for more such informative and educational videos stay tuned with bfarma wise take care bye bye